Nick Rudder from McKees37.com. In this video, I'm going to walk you through step-by-step -step on how I restored my new-to-me 2001 Mercedes-Benz E320 4Matic wagon. That's a mouthful. So if you've watched any of my previous videos, you know I love buying these dilapidated hoopties, diamond in the rough, something that's a special interest vehicle that I normally get for a great price. I fix it up, I drive it for a few months, I return it to its original glory using my God-given talents and abilities to make it look brand new. And I thoroughly enjoy it along the way. So this vehicle was no exception. It's my first Mercedes-Benz. I'm not typically a huge fan because of maintenance, um, the cost of maintenance and repairs, but I've done a lot of research and I've heard really good things about the W210 generation. And with this being a 2001, it's toward the end of that life cycle. So the 3.2 liter single overhead cam, the five speed automatic, by then they worked all the kinks out. And supposedly these are pretty robust drivetrain. So I bought it for a great price. Clearly, as you'll see in a moment, the car was extremely dirty, especially the inside. It needed a good polishing. But I'll tell you, the car ran beautifully. The previous owners who were the original owners, they were an elderly couple and they had gotten a brand new. And the only reason they sold it is because she was getting a little too old to get into a lower station wagon. So they upgraded to a Toyota SUV, something newer, something more modern, something more comfortable for her. And I picked it up at a great price, basically for the price of what a new sectional costs these days. So I, I really did well with it. Uh, I hope you enjoy this step-by-step -step video showcasing the interior and exterior restoration using a combination of McKee's 37 products along with my friends at Leather Reek. So sit down, hang tight, enjoy, and if you like videos like this, make sure you click like, give me a thumbs up, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching. I first turn my attention towards the interior of this Mercedes-Benz. As you can clearly see, the inside is filthy. The leather is disgusting. It has 23 years of road grime and dirt and body oils and food on it. The dashboard has oxidized plastics. The floor mats, the cargo liners, the carpet, the upholstery, all of it looks terrible. Fortunately, we have a solution. First, I'm going to use Leather Reek. Leather Reek is a family-owned company. They've been around forever, and they simply make two products, a leather rejuvenating oil and a product called Pristine Clean. It's a two-step leather restoration system, starting with the rejuvenating oil. This product is designed to be applied liberally. It's perfect for restoring old, neglected, dried out leather. Simply apply it with a microfiber or terry cloth applicator and be very thorough and very liberal with your application. It's perfectly normal for the seats to appear greasy or slimy after applying it. That's how you know when you've applied the correct amount. The way this works is the leather, which is skin, it's cowhide, it absorbs the rejuvenating oil and it helps restore the leather's flexibility as well as the color, and it restores any lost conditioning agents along the way after years of drying out. You can also apply Leather Reek to the leather on the door panels or anywhere else where leather has been dried out and neglected on this vehicle, even the back seat. Now, typically for a vehicle of this size, for the rejuvenating oil, which again, you apply liberally or heavy or wet, you're going to use close to a 16 ounce bottle on the entire interior. It's really important that you thoroughly work it in so the leather has a chance to absorb it. What you'll notice is as you work it, it'll actually begin to absorb already, which means you can apply more. Now, this is the jump seat in the third row, which modern cars don't really have. And as you can see, there's some creases. Leather Reek will help fix that as well. Again, you'll see me apply a heavy or wet amount I'm very, very thorough with how I apply it. If it begins to absorb right away, simply apply more. If you're OCD and you can't stand having something look greasy or grimy, well, you're gonna have to adjust because this is what the finished product should look like, a uniform, slimy, oily appearance. While that's absorbing, I went ahead and I turned my attention towards vacuuming the cargo area. This is where the jump seat is stored. It folds down into the seat, and I simply use my Super Vacuum Blaster with the claw tool to remove most of the dirt and debris. And then to make things easier, I changed over to a crevice tool. And there's no science behind this, but I'll tell you, Metro makes the best vacuum cleaners. 
To make cleaning the floor mat from the trunk area easier, I removed it from the vehicle and I sprayed it down with McKees 37 carpet and upholstery cleaner. This product works on all types of stains and it does not leave the fibers stiff and it doesn't need to be rinsed off with a hose or flushed out with a wet towel. Simply spray it on and then to make things even easier, I use the nylon bristle brush that attaches to the truck of my drill. After you work it in, simply wipe off any excess residue with a microfiber towel and let it dry before reinstalling in the vehicle. Several hours later, it was time to use the Pristine Clean. Now, depending on how bad the seats are in your vehicle, you want to let the rejuvenating oil sit anywhere from 6 to 24 hours. For this application, I let it sit for about 8 hours, and that seemed to give me the results I was looking for. Now, at this point, the oil has absorbed into the seats, and as it absorbs into the seats, it nourishes the leather, it rejuvenates it, hence the name, and it also lifts the dirt to the top of the surface so you can use the Pristine Clean. Now, I'm using Pristine Clean with an AutoForge scrubbing applicator pad. There's thousands of these soft nylon fingers that really get in the leather and agitate it to remove any ground in dirt and soiling. Once you're satisfied, use a microfiber towel and wipe off the excess cleaner. Right away, you'll notice just how much better the leather looks, feels, and smells. But don't stop at the seats. Make sure you treat the armrests as well. The armrest is arguably the dirtiest part of the interior besides the steering wheel because that's where your bare arm sits and it releases dirt and grime, sweat and body oil all over the leather. Clean it thoroughly, you'll be amazed at the difference it makes. But a word of caution, when working on an older vehicle like this, don't scrub too hard. If you notice some areas that appear to be dirty, it could actually be the dye itself is fading from the leather. And if you're too aggressive with your brush or your applicator pad, you can actually scrub away the dye and have a very ununiform appearance that doesn't look that great. Moving to the back seat, exact same process. Apply the Pristine Clean thoroughly using a liberal amount and take your time and really clean it thoroughly, scrubbing to make sure that you remove all the excess dirt that has been risen to the top of the surface. And here you'll notice that as I'm leaning on the back seat, part of it broke off. The joys of owning an older car. Then I turn my attention to the door panels where again the exact same process apply the pristine clean and then use the applicator pad to clean things thoroughly and then wipe off the residue with a microfiber towel. Next up it was time to turn my attention towards the carpet. As you can see the carpet was in pretty rough shape with these black stains that were caused from the previous floor mats essentially disintegrating over time. I sprayed a thorough amount of McKees 37 carpet and upholstery cleaner, which again, this is a fantastic cleaner, does not leave the material stiff or crunchy, and it's odorless, and it cleans practically every stain you can imagine from carpet and upholstery. My brush of choice is a Tampico natural brush, and I like this because it's ergonomically designed and the fibers are not too stiff or too soft, but they're just right. As you can see, carpet and upholstery cleaner made a huge difference. Once that was finished, I applied McKees 37 leather conditioner to all the leather upholstery in the vehicle, starting with the seats. Now, normally with Leather Reek, it's a two-step system consisting of the oil and then the cleaner. You can stop there, but I found it extremely beneficial to follow with McKees 37 leather conditioner because it adds its own benefits as well. Namely, the awesome brand new leather car fragrance that is to die for. My Mercedes smelled like a brand new car afterwards, and not only did the leather conditioner make the interior smell new, but it took the seats up another notch in terms of how they felt and how they looked. And again, don't stop at just the seats. Anywhere there's leather upholstery, apply the leather conditioner, including the armrest and the door panels. Normally, on a brand new car, when I apply leather conditioner, I tend to apply a thin coat and I wipe off the excess. With an older vehicle like this Mercedes, the leather, even though it's been rejuvenated and restored by the Leather Reek system, it's still 23 years old, so I want to feed it as much leather conditioner as possible so I don't wipe off the excess. And here you can see just how bad the floor liners were. These are old school WeatherTech liners. They're great quality, but they're very dirty. I use McKees 37 floor mat and cargo liner rejuvenator to clean them and bring them back to life. Rinse off any loose dirt first, spray the product on, then use a stiff bristle brush to agitate it. It's a good idea to go with the pattern of the floor mat to make cleaning even easier. This product works amazingly well. It's easy to use 
and it does not smell bad. As a matter of fact, it has a pleasant fragrance and it does not leave the floor mats slippery or greasy. Once you're satisfied with the cleaning, thoroughly rinse it off and let it air dry or you can dry it with a microfiber towel before reinstalling in the vehicle. Makes a huge difference. Once the leather conditioner had fully absorbed into the seats, I turned my attention towards cleaning the dashboard using the Keys 37 Total Interior Cleaner. Again, I'm using an AutoForge interior scrubber. These work great to scrub off the oxidized dead plastic as well as remove any ground in, dirt and grime. You can spray the product directly onto the applicator pad or if it's a larger area of the dashboard, simply spray it directly onto the dashboard. Total Interior Cleaner does not have any kind of harsh fragrance. As a matter of fact, there's no fragrance at all and it's safe on leather, plastic, rubber, and vinyl surfaces. It's one of our best sellers and for good reason. After you thoroughly clean the surface, take a microfiber towel and wipe off any excess. Now for cleaning the steering wheel, I didn't even bother taking the steering wheel cover off because the previous owner informed me that the steering wheel was in really bad shape and basically disintegrated. This cover matched the interior perfectly, so again, I gave it the same treatment using Total Interior Cleaner, and it's amazing just how much dirt and grime it removed from the steering wheel. And then another very, very dirty part of the interior is the shift knob. I sprayed Total Interior Cleaner directly onto the shift knob and I gently agitated. What I mentioned earlier is valid here as well. So a lot of times what appears to be dirt is actually simply worn out leather. And if you scrub too hard, you'll scrub through the dye. So as I wipe off the excess here, you'll see that there's a little spot where it looks like there's dirt, but it's actually not dirt. It's simply the leather that's worn out. So I'm very gentle with my applicator pad, not being too aggressive because I can take that small spot and make it much worse. Once the inside was finished, I turned my attention towards the outside, specifically the engine bay. If you're going to detail the engine bay, make that the first part of the exterior detail. Now before you rinse everything off, make sure that any caps, dipstick, air boxes, hoses, clamps, it's all nice and tight so you don't cause any unwanted damage. This takes a few seconds and it's well worth it. Then you can use a blower to remove any leaves or loose debris or just pick it out by hand. Here I am taking out some leaves that have been collecting for who knows how long, probably 23 years before I rinse everything down with a garden hose. And make sure your engine is not hot to the touch. Some guys like to clean a warm engine, that's fine too, but this is after the vehicle's been sitting all day, so it was not dirty. I take McKee's 37 engine degreaser and I thoroughly saturate the surface. You'll notice that when I rinsed everything off beforehand that I got the windshield and the fenders wet as well. This is to dilute any cleaner so it doesn't cause any damage to the painted surfaces or the glass. Set up next to the car, I have a Carolina detailing cart that contains a bucket that has water along with some wheel and tire brushes to make cleaning the engine bay easy. Here I'm using our short handle wheel and tire brush to clean the larger areas. This has medium density bristles that are safe, effective, and it just plain old works well, plus it's chemical resistant. Then for the hard to reach areas, I use the Easy Detail Brush. Each brush has thousands of compact, flexible nylon and nylex bristles that compress to get in all the hard to reach areas. The brush also has a knuckle guard to protect your hands. These work great and they're made in the USA. Everybody should have one of these brushes in their arsenal of detailing supplies. It cleans all the nooks and crannies where the larger brushes simply wouldn't reach. And then for the detailed areas, I like to use a boar's hair detail brush. This gets in and does all the minor fine detailing that the larger brushes simply cannot access. It's very quick, it's effective, these brushes are made in the USA, and they're compact, and they have a non-slip handle, they work awesome. Once everything is cleaned, use a garden hose to rinse everything off. Now, you'll notice that I have the garden hose set on the fan setting. The goal is to not saturate the engine bay, but to simply rinse it off. I like to do the hood last, and the reason why is if you do the hood first, then you're going to have degreaser and water dripping on your head as you clean the engine bay. I'm using that short handle brush, and if my hood looks funny, it's because it's on the service mode. Most vehicles, you can lift the hood extra high, and it'll latch basically at a 90 degree angle compared to the engine bay, and it gives you a lot more room to work without hitting your head. Most cars have this, but make sure that you have it set up correctly so it does not fall on your head. Once that's completed, rinse everything off, 
and then simply lower the hood and most importantly, cross your fingers that the engine starts without any issues. Take a look at just how dirty my bucket of water is from cleaning the engine bay. Here I am hopping in the car, saying a quick prayer, putting the key in, firing it up, and woohoo, it starts, no issues. Next up, it was time to clean the wheels. Now, normally I clean the tires too, but the tires in this Mercedes were dry rotted, so I had them replaced a few days after this video was filmed. To clean the wheels, I used McKee's 37 Extreme Iron Remover. I use this to simplify things because I like to have a bottle handy to chemically decontaminate the paint when I wash the body. Spray it on, let it dwell, it changes colors as it cleans. To clean between the spokes, I use the Easy Detail Brush, and to clean the face of the wheel, I use the Short Handle Wheel and Tire Brush, the same brushes I used for detailing the engine, and then I use the Wheel Woolies Detail Brush to clean the lug nuts, the valve stem, and along the actual rim of the wheel. Extreme Iron Remover does not smell that bad. It's extremely effective, it rinses freely, and it leaves the wheels clean and bright because it chemically decontaminates them by breaking up and dissolving any iron particles. Rinse it off, and best of all, it will not stain your driveway, a huge plus. After the wheels were clean, I turned my attention to the paint. Before I even washed the vehicle, I sprayed a liberal amount of McKee's 37 Extreme Iron Remover all over the exterior surfaces, the paint and the glass, as well as the plastic and metal trim. This step is imperative, even for a brand new car, because all cars are exposed to iron contamination. And the issue is this contamination is corrosive and it will cause issues down the road. Here you can see my Mercedes is bleeding red as the iron remover breaks up and dissolves the embedded iron particles, enhancing the gloss and leaving the paint very smooth. This step makes a huge difference and it only takes a few minutes to apply. Now, I like to do it before I wash the car. That way the product is not diluted by water or soap. And for the wash at this step, I'm using McKee's 37 Coating Prep Auto Wash. This is a high alkaline formula that removes any trace residues of previously applied waxes, sealants, plus just heavy dirt and road grime, especially found on a vehicle this old that has not been washed in who knows how long. Like all of our washes, it smells great, it will not dry out your skin, and it creates a ton of suds whether you use it in a foam gun or a bucket. It rinses freely, and overall, it's just a joy to use. And here, I have my Carolina detailing cart so I'm not bending over every time I have to reload my wash media with soapy solution. This soap works great and it truly makes a huge difference by amplifying the gloss by deep cleaning the paint better than a regular car wash. After chemically decontaminating the paint, it was time to mechanically decontaminate it. And for that, I'm using the McKee's 37 Universal Clay Mitt, specifically the medium grade. A clay mitt has a rubberized polymer coating that shaves off bonded contaminants, leaving the paint super smooth and ready for polishing. This clay mitt is easy to use and it lasts a lot longer than a clay bar. Plus, you can use car wash soap as a lubricant. After you chemically and mechanically decontaminate the entire vehicle, go ahead and rinse off any soap residue and dry using a Glacier 1100 drying towel. This towel is available in three sizes. For this vehicle, I use the 30 by 50 inch. It's massive, and as you can see, I'm throwing it across the hood, and it dries in one pass. Plus, it has built-in pockets, so you can dry the side of the vehicle without worrying about dropping it on the ground. These towels are absolutely fantastic, and they are a whopping 1100 GSM. They make drying fast, easy, plus, if you have a dark-colored car, you don't have to worry about the surface being scratched. Once everything was clean and dry, I pulled the car in the garage, and you can see before, just how dull the hood was. I put a piece of tape line down, and here I'm doing a test spot using a Rupes LHR21 Mark III, a blue coarse cutting pad, and McKee's 37 Beast Compound. And this machine is smooth, it's easy to handle, the pads are great, our Beast Compound works extremely well with these pads, it's just a pleasure to use and it reduces any fatigue. The Beast Compound wipes off without any effort, and here we can see, as I remove the tape line, pulling the tape slowly at an angle, the difference it made. Now, this looks pretty good. The left side is before and the right side is after.
but from my experience, I can do a little bit better, so I grabbed the Flex PE Cordless Rotary Tool. The paint on this Mercedes-Benz was rock hard, so I know I could squeeze some more gloss by using a wool pad on a rotary polisher. And you can see how I laid down a bead about the thickness of a pencil, and I picked it up at 10 o'clock on the wool pad of this rotary polisher. This machine is smooth, lightweight, and easy to handle. Here's a tip. To make the polisher easier to use, that is, a rotary tool, hold the pad at an angle. You do not have to hold it flat. If you hold it flat, it'll drag you around. The Beast Compound wipes off without any effort, and here you can see the difference. Here is the after, and then here is the before. So the distinction of image has been greatly improved. And here I am as a time-lapse video using the Flex Rotary Polisher on the entire hood of the Mercedes-Benz. I did not use the rotary for any of the other surfaces because there was really no heavy swirls or oxidation, but the hood was just dull. I actually thought it was repainted, but the paint thickness gauge told me otherwise. Afterwards, for the rest of the vehicle, I used the Beast Compound with the blue coarse pad on the Rupes LHR21 Mark III. This tool is extremely smooth, it's extremely quiet, and I love using it on details like this. Now you'll notice that I'm moving the machine rather quickly, that is my arm speed. The speed itself on the tool is speed three. This Mercedes did not really have any swirls or scratches. The paint was just a little bit oxidized and I wanted to bring it back to life. This is what I call a big picture detail, certainly not show car detailing. Here I am, another time lapse, using the 21 Mark III on the side of the Mercedes. This tool, I can't emphasize just how smooth it is. Rupes really has this dialed in and the blue coarse pad works great with a McKees 37 Beast compound. For the hard to reach areas, I grabbed the Flex PXE80. This is a battery powered mini polisher that you can change from a 12 millimeter dual action, a three millimeter, as well as a direct drive rotary. This tool is lightweight, compact, it weighs next to nothing, and it works great for the small, intricate panels as well as taillights. And here you can see me working tremendously fast because again, it's a time lapse on the rear bumper of my Mercedes E320. This tool is essential for anyone that takes detailing seriously because it makes the job so much easier. Plus, it includes two batteries and a charger and you have a long run time and with flex quality, you never have to worry about having any issues with a tool down the road. You simply cannot beat the Flex PXE80 for small, intricate panels. After compounding the entire Mercedes, I changed pads to a yellow polishing pad from Rupes using the same tool, 21 Mark III, and a prototype all-in-one or cleaner wax, as some of you would call it, by McKees 37. This product is not out yet, and this Mercedes was my first time using it on a full detail, and it worked exceptionally well has a long working time, and as you can see, it wipes off without any effort. This product will be available in a few months, and I'm certain it's going to be one of our best sellers. Check out the after, the insane gloss produced by the Beast Compound and this new prototype all-in-one. But wait, there's more. I still needed to protect and beautify the engine bay, which I deep cleaned earlier in the detail. And for that, I used McKees 37 Trim Detailer. But before I used it, I used the McKees 37 Mini Car Dryer Pro to blast out water from cracks and crevices to ensure the engine bay is dry before applying the trim detailer. McKees 37 Trim Detailer protects and beautifies all the plastic and rubber hoses, the shrouds, the engine cover, and anything else that needs to have a rejuvenated appearance. Its aerosol application makes it quick and easy to apply, and it does not leave the engine too glossy like you'd often find on a used car lot, but it looks just right, the perfect amount of gloss. The finishing touch on the interior was to use McKees 37 graphene coating wax on all the wood trim. Now, whether this is real wood or just a veneer or plastic is beyond me. However, graphene coating wax enhances it and it gave it a nice high gloss finish that's really slick and will help repel dust. Now, I did install a modern radio so I have my Apple CarPlay with navigation. And here I am treating the wood trim on the door panel as well. It made a big difference and the wood trim really popped. And here you have it, the finished product for the interior of my 2001 Mercedes-Benz E320 wagon. It looks, feels, and smells 
brand new thanks to all these great products found at mckees37.com and autoforge.net. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any comments or any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments box below. I really appreciate you guys. And again, make sure you give me a thumbs up, click the like button, and subscribe to the McKees 37 YouTube channel. And for more information on the Leather Reek brand, visit autoforge.net, our sister website, under the same corporate umbrella as McKees37.com. I'm Nick Rudder. Take care, God bless, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.